Turkey uh, border areas regarding what we are uh, knowing about the latest uh, Boku violence. Uh, we'll definitely be getting back uh, for some updates, but I want to bring in Adip Sani, who's a security analyst, uh, joining us here on The Pulse uh, this afternoon. Thank you, sir, for spending some time with us. Um, it's quite um, worrying knowing that uh, the attempts to bring lasting peace to the area has not yielded any um, positive results. What else can security agencies and authorities do now just to restore calm? Well, th thank you for the opportunity. In your preamble, you mentioned the fact that the um, violence, um, it appears as returning, but, but I think um, it is important to establish that the violence has never ended. Um, it's been continuous, uh, just that uh, there's, there's not been so much media reportage about it. It almost is like a daily occurrence. Sometimes uh, people are even shot right in front of the police uh, station, almost on daily basis. I have reports of incidents of violence in the area. and. Uh, Unfortunate twist to all of these is the fact that it is cyclical in nature. You know, I attack you, you attack me, you uh, attack me, I attack you, and it, it, it doesn't stop. Because there were concerns at the beginning that um, those who try to gain access into Boku are ambushed at the outskirts, okay? And so the other side also feels that, okay, you would have to go through our territory also before mm -hmm. you even get to the Boko enclave. Yeah. So we also have the capacity to attack you. And it is all based on information they, they receive. You know, they have people everywhere. So they go to the station and they are able to call to tell their combatants on the ground that, look, we've seen this man we want. You know, he's an enemy. He's, he's boarding these vehicles, and this is the color of the vehicle, this is the make, and this is the number plate of the vehicle. And they are able to, you know, stop the vehicle, bring down the person, and execute. And uh, it looks like we have given up on Boku. I'll be honest with you. It looks like we've given up on Boku, and um, we, we don't seem to show any concern about what is going on in the area. And back to your question. I think we need to look at it in the short term to medium term to long, to long term. And in the short term, mm. uh, we would have to ensure that the yeah. cycle of violence stops. Okay. Um, the very dawn I drove through um, Wale Wale some few weeks ago, um, that was the very dawn a bus was bent. And, you know, there were some reported attacks. Mm. So when I was returning to Tamale from Bulga, um, it was somewhat late, and there was an escort. And the unfortunate thing about the escort is the fact that uh, the, 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 the police sometimes are faster than some other vehicles. So I would propose that we have three vehicles doing the escort, one in front the other in the middle, depending on the number of vehicles that are being escorted, and one at the back. Mm. The last police vehicle or military vehicle at the back should not overtake any vehicle. Right. You get me? They yeah. should be put together. And we also need to pay attention to what is happening before you enter Boku also. Because mm. I, I, I remember some time ago there were escorts. I don't know whether it is still in place. So we are able to stop the violence then we can start considering what the other issues are and all of it can be brought to mm. a better light when there okay. is converse, a, a, a conversation on it when there is dialogue and i understand the ashantahini is on it i see um but, but looking at the very situation that we have now at least some some intermittent um checks by the police will be helpful probably a patrol team uh, looking at what's happening in the area Absolutely. We have patrol teams. But the thing is, um, they say that when um, a, a hunter learns to shoot without uh, missing, the birds would learn to fly without perching. Uh, they, they know the movements of, of the police sometimes. They are able to get information about the location or whereabouts of the police patrol team and are able to convey it to their other you know, members on the ground. So 
um, in most cases, they are able to stage these attacks, you know, without the, 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 the police knowing about it, or they are able to execute before the police gets there. And, and I'm talking about the whole area, not exclusive to Bupu right. or Wali Wali. That is why uh, we need technology as well, the use of drone technology. Um, and how many uh, police patrol teams do we have in that area? Mm. A lot of them lack the necessary logistics. They don't have enough vehicles. You go, the vehicles are broken down and, you know, they are, they are handicapped. So I think government should pay more attention on, on that area. Like I say, um, Boku presents to us our weakest link so far as countering violent extremism is concerned. You know, we live in a very unstable sub-region and if care is not taking right. uh, these bad, bad nuts would gain access through Boku, but unfortunately, you know, truth is uh, we, we seem to have given up on the area. Okay, uh, we'll leave it here for now and still keep monitoring the situation. We'll definitely get back to you. Uh, Deep Sani uh, joining us with his thoughts this afternoon on the polls. Uh, but back here in Accra, the Greater Accra Regional Minister uh, through, through the Regional Coordinating Council, well, they've uh, recorded the highest uh, they're actually the highest decision making uh, body uh, they've held their first meeting for 2023 to discuss issues of development in the region the regional minister uh, who heads the council was um, to deliver a speech to the heads of some 29 military uh, that's a metropolitan municipality uh, and district uh, assembly um, CEOs. Uh, just then he got upset so upset that he actually put aside his